for some of us, all things but for the ward become a dim memory. Home was some distant star, no closer than the sun or moon. Each man dreamed of that distant star, of all things familiar and good, of fighting no more battles. But for some of us, maybe all of us, going home would only mean the end of one war and the beginning of another. We fought together, but we'd go home alone. Till then, my darling, please wait for me. Till then, no matter when it will be, one day I know I'll be back again. Please wait. Till then, our dreams will live the we. Or apart our love I know we'll keep in our hearts Till then When all the world will be free Please wait for me Although there are oceans we must cross And mountains that we was climb. I know every gain must have a loss, so pray that our loss is nothing but time. Till then, let's dream of what there will be. Till then, we'll call on each memory. Till then, when I will hold you again, please wait till then. Well, it's exactly the same. Well, there are a few touches here and there, but I wanted it to be just the way you'd remembered. You must be exhausted. I have 14 days to get home. The ship and the train. They were in a much bigger rush to get us to the war than from it. I was so proud of you when you stepped off that train, George. <sighs> the uniform, you know. It does the trick. <laughs> I should wear it in court. You'd never lose a case. I bet you're dying for a martini. Very, very dry. Yeah, actually, I kind of lost my taste for gin. Martinis, they're, uh, they're not too big an item on the front. Whose idea was it prayed? Oh, our beloved Mayor Cantrell. In cahoots with your father, I think. Nothing's too good for Major George Meade. Cantrell. He was always happiest waving at people from a moving car. Where's the rest of this picture? The rest of what? The rest of this picture. I was standing here with five other men. I only wanted to look at you. I wish you hadn't done that. I'm sorry, George. I, I didn't know. Uh, it's all right. It's all right. Forget it. Well, I've been waiting four years to get out of this uniform. So I'm going to, uh... I'll be right back to him.
Good luck. Take care. Nos vemos. Suerte. Que te vaya bien. Huevos, señora. Están muy buenos. 60 centavos la docena. ¿Qué? Muy bueno. Un poquito de tomate también. Le ponemos un poquito de sal Le ponemos esto, que más alguna cosita más. Everybody crowd in on him. The doctor said he's liable to be shy because of his wound. Sometimes he might not know what to say. So y'all just act like you don't notice. You want us to go and wait for him, huh? No, no, I want him to see people that he knows. Ah! Do you have to do that, Andy? Well, it's my way of saying welcome home. Give me that thing. Now, Sam, your daddy's gonna be real surprised when he sees how grown up you are. You just give him a big hug and everything will be fine. cities, Salerno, Remagen, <laughs> all of France. The world is an unbelievable place, even with the bombs dropping. You have fought bravely, and now you are home where you belong. You made me very proud. I thought about you, Papa, every day. <laughs> I would have loved to have seen what I've seen, be where I've been. It's a very small place where we live compared to what's out there. You will marry Maria. If she didn't forget about me. Oh, she didn't. Couldn't be different now, Papa. I can feel it. I fought side by side with men who wouldn't give me the time of day when I was a civilian. They depended on me and I depended on them. This war, it, it brought everybody together. You'll see. There is no more war. Well, 
I haven't slept in three days. Good night, Papa. Well, you're doing fine, Jesse. Now, you're still going to be feeling confused. Might be some minor speech difficulty. But all in all, everything looks good. When will he be out of the chair? It's hard to tell with head wounds. Brain has to relearn the messages it sends to the legs. It takes time. You keep doing the exercise they gave you. Slowly but surely, you'll start to walk again. How are you holding up, Becky? Me? Yes, you. I'm fine. I'm a little tired. It's a big adjustment coming back from war. Harder for some than others. My daughter's been working with some veterans. If you need anything, even just to talk. That's why she's here, okay? <laughs> I heard you're back. Hello, Becky. Yeah. Hope. Welcome home, George. Well, we made it, huh, George? Well, either that or we're dead. Nobody told us. <laughs> How you feeling? Oh, I'm fine. Just fine. It's your Johnny Dynamite's back. Ron Star and all. We're all getting together at the Blue Moon Thursday night. Everybody's gonna be there. Well, so will I. Oh, as a matter of fact, there's something I want to talk to you about, George. It's it's it's, it's important. We better get going, Jesse. Right. So, I'll see you Thursday night, 2100. Well, you can be there 2100. I'm going to be there at 9 o'clock. All right. Good to see you. Good to see you. You look great. Bye-bye. Right. Is he going to be all right? Well, it's hard to tell with head wounds. My father thinks he's mm. going to be all right. It's going to take some time, though. Hmm. He still likes to talk a lot, doesn't he? We used to say he was vaccinated with a phonograph needle. I'm happy to see you, George. I'm a little busy, though. I just need a minute. It's, it's important. All right, come on. You know, the last time I saw you, you were planting a garden outside your house. But well, you didn't see me. I was on a bus on my way to Basin. Well, the garden's long gone. They tell me you're doing good work here. Oh, well, after staring at the ceiling for a couple of months, I realized that wasn't going to bring Tim back. I went back to school, got my degree in psychology. Figured there'd be plenty to do when the boys got back. So Daddy kind of takes care of their bodies, and I try and take care of their minds. So far, he has a much higher success rate. I just wanted you to know uh, how sorry I am about Tim. I was going to write a letter. Oh, that's all right, George. I really didn't know what to say. Widows aren't much in fashion this time of year. After all, we won the war, the boys are coming home. Guess it's just much easier to watch a parade. People don't really want to think about all those wives and children don't feel much like celebrating. Well, I'm sorry, Hope. If there's anything I can do. Glad to come here, George. What is it you wanted to say to me? I was with Tim when he died. It happened right in front of me. It was all, all so quick. I held him and then he died in my arms. Did he suffer, George? Tell me the truth. I don't think he really felt anything. Except maybe cold. He told me he was cold. And then he asked me to come see you. Tell you that he loved you. He wanted you to know that 
he was thinking of you when he died. Human beings have an amazing capacity for pain, George. Did you know that? Good thing, too, because just about when you think you've had all you can take, there's plenty more where that came from. I'm sorry, Hope. I have to say I was surprised when you and Tim became friends during the war. You were... Such opposites in school. Tim was going to change the world. And you were going to own it. That seems like such a long time ago. He was a good man, Hope. And a good friend. But you don't need me to tell you that. I said, if there's anything I can do, you let me know. George, did Tim say anything else? He looked up at me. And he said, don't look so scared, George. You're dead already anyway. You've been dead ever since law school. You just don't know it. Please home and that's for sure. I've never seen it so organized. Brand new lathe. Yeah, well, we did pretty good last year. It seemed like a smart idea to put some money back in the business. Mm -hmm. I would have asked you about it, Jeff. Well, <laughs> I wasn't exactly right around the corner now, was I? <clears throat> Are you all right? Fine, I don't know why. I expected it to be the same. Four years is a long time. Yeah, that's what I hear. I'm sorry, Jess. I didn't mean for it to That's all right. What's this? Uh, we got a contract with the Air Force Base. Steering linkage for the C-4. I can see that, but what's this 5% over cost on every 5,000? Hmm? The mayor. Comes out of our profits. You mean Cantrell's taking a payoff from us on a military contract? He bought us the job, Jesse. I can't believe it. <sighs> I mean, it's one thing to pay him off to stay in business. I mean, everybody's used to that, but to skim on a war contract. Well, he's got this whole system worked out. Yeah, there he does. Business tax, he calls it. Everything else has a luxury tax. Everybody's got to live with it. It ain't just us. It's just not right. Someday I'm gonna tax him up. I'm gonna tax him right where it hurts. Well, I'll say this much for Truman. He doesn't trust the Russians the way Roosevelt did. He understands that deep down they're up to no good. Mr. Meade? Well, they were good enough to fight with us. You watch. Stalin's gonna try and take over the world. Mark my words, our next war will be with the Russians, I guarantee it. Mr. Mayor. The UN says there's not gonna be any more wars. You believe that, George? 
No. Well, of course not. Excuse me. Human nature. As long as there are things that people want that they can't have, there will be war. Well, here's to this war being over. Here, here. George? How's it feel to be working with your father? Like being back in battle, only quieter. <laughs> George is the best lawyer I've got. I'm not sure I'd like you stealing him away from me, Tom. Obviously, I've missed something here. I... Tom and I have been talking a lot while you've been gone about the future of this county. About your future, too. I have the highest regard for your father, George, as you know. And we both agree that you possess certain qualities. Qualities that should not go to waste. Such as? I think you're a man of vision, George. You have an ability to, to see the big picture. You're a born leader. Election's coming up next month. Tom is offering you a spot on the ticket. County trustee. Bill Carlson is retiring on my advice. We need a fighting man that the veteran can look up to. We need some new blood. Well, I'm not a fighting man anymore, Tom. My biggest ambition now is to lay down a lot. I mean, it's hard to look up to somebody who's taking a nap. I'm trying to be serious here, son. This has been in the cards for you for a long time. You can't deny your destiny. Well, it's not that I don't appreciate the offer, because I do. I, I, I don't need an answer right now. You think about it. You talk it over with that beautiful wife of yours. But remember this, George. Your time has come. It's been going on since we were kids. Ever since that greedy bastard's been mayor, he's been bleeding this county dry. He gets a piece of every contract that comes his way. You want to put in a bid to build a road, you better put Tom Cantrell down for his 10%. That's right. He's got a tax on every bottle of beer I open. He gets a percentage of every case of liquor. I've got to pay him off on every gallon of gas I sell. And Cantrell keeps his hands nice and clean. Sheriff McMillan does all his collecting for him. And if you don't like it, McMillan will come and bust your head for you. Mm -hmm. now, now, look, if we didn't take this kind of bull from the Nazis, I don't know why we have to come home and take it from Tom Cantrell. That's right. All right, George? Yeah, you're right, sure. But it's been going on a long time. I mean, uh, people are used to it. And besides, Cantrell, he's got his good points, at least as far as the town's concerned. <laughs> he brings a lot of work into this county. And he takes care of the people that take care of him. Whose side are you on? Since when are their sides? Since right now. Well, we got an election coming up. And the way we figure it, nobody serious has ever ran against Cantrell. We're gonna change that. We're a former old party. Not Democrat, not Republican, but veteran. When we'll we get all the vets together, we'll run for, for, you all right? It's nothing, like I'm saying. <laughs> we run Jack here for sheriff, Billy for county clerk, and Johnny for trustee. Straight bet right down the line. I'm next for trustee? I think you've gone crazy, Jesse. <laughs> Don't laugh, Johnny. It's the best chance you got. It's the best chance we all got. Well, how about it, George? Oh, it's it's a good idea, all right. But it'll never work. Cantrell's too powerful. He's been at it too long. Well, I'm sorry to hear you say that. I was hoping you'd head up a ticket for us, run for mayor. We'd be unbeatable with you, George. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Now, I'm flattered, Jess. I really am, but I, I, I wish I could help you. I'm talking about helping the county. But you're assuming that, that the county wants to be helped. People are just as fed up as we are. Well, maybe they don't know it yet, but they are. Well, this is a good fairy tale, Jesse, but it's late and I gotta go. We're gonna make history, Johnny. You're gonna miss out. The only thing I wanna make is some money. Hasta luego, amigos. Last chance, George. I'm sorry, Jess. I'm just not interested. This is what we've been waiting for, George. This is your chance. You have greatness in you. I see it. Your father sees it. Tom Cantrell sees it. You're the only one who doesn't. 
I don't know what's right anymore. That's what you have me for, darling. Do you remember Hope Tyler's husband? The poor man who got killed. Yes, of course. I was with him when he died. He said something to me. Something I can't get out of my head. He told me this. You've got to stop dwelling on the past, George. It's time to put the war behind you. Think about us. Think about our future. Oh, run with Camp Trail, darling. This is only the beginning. All we have to do is take that first leap. We're ready for this. We deserve this. que eres tú mi amor, mi obsesión, mi emoción, te quiero alejar con todo mi amor. Look at Juan. Like a big kid, huh? Well, uh, that's one big kid I'll take on my side every time. It's the best dynamite man I've ever seen. It's the only dynamite man you've ever seen. Who dialed your number? <laughs> Andy, let's do that uh, bunker routine again. Achtung du Luftwaffe! The Americans were dropping bombs left and right. But the Führer says damage is very slight. However, However as, as a result, result of this mission, mission one of our cities is missing. <laughs> hey, George. You remember the night your sleeping bag caught on fire? I thought my feet were finally getting warm. Nobody told me I was getting on fire. It's a beautiful wedding, isn't it? Yes, it is. Sometimes it's a good idea to get away from the men. They like to talk amongst themselves, you know. As long as they stay out of trouble. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't worry about that. They talk big, but they're essentially harmless. Like a school of fish or a flock of birds. <laughs> Miss Mead, can I ask you a question, personally? Miss Barbara. Certainly. Does George act funny since he's been back? I'm sorry, I don't mean funny, not like that. I'm, what I mean is, do you think he... Is there anything different about him? For instance, Jesse, well, he doesn't know how to talk to me anymore, and, and I, I don't know if... My husband is perfectly fine. Excuse me. So we're going to register for the election next week. Can't believe how much paperwork there is. I envy you, Jesse. You're a man who knows what he wants. How about you, George? What do you want? I wish I knew. Well, you missed your chance to run with us. We got a new candidate for mayor. Who? Me. Real hard, Hope. I swear I am. Oh, but I don't know if I'm doing right or not. But Jesse? He gets these spells. Can't remember how to do certain things. And 
Sometimes his voice gets stuck. He just goes wild. Scares a boy half to death. Me too. Does he try to hurt you? No, no. Mostly he just hurts himself. Jesse's gonna get better. It's just a matter of time. He wants me to quit working. What do you think? Nope. I love running that factory. And I got a real knack for it, too. We're making more money now than we did when Jesse ran it. Have you tried talking to him about it, telling him how you feel? It's not as easy as it used to be. He doesn't really want to talk anymore. He didn't even talk to me about running for mayor. He just decided to do it. I think it's a crazy idea. Have you thought about encouraging him? He's doing something he believes in. Encourage him? But how? He's got no chance, let's face it. Now, the whole thing is just plain foolish. Not to him. Well, I better get on back. Thanks for the time, Hope. I wish I had the answers for you, Becky. It's just nice to have someone listen. Becky, you're taking care of a lot of things right now. Don't forget to take care of yourself. If you ever want somebody to talk to, day or night, you know where I am. You take such good care of everybody, Hope. It takes care of you. Hello, sir. Well, what can I do for you, son? My name is Juan Medina. I came about the job, office clerk. I see. Well, have a seat there, Mr. Medina. Thank you. Oh, um, these are my discharge papers. Honorable discharge. Mm -hmm. They really give you the bronze star, son? Yes, sir. It's right here. So they did. Well, uh, would you say your qualifications are, Mr. Uh, Medina? I'm a very hard worker. I mean, do you know anything about the insurance business? I learned fast. I learned very fast in the service. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of special training. What kind of special training? Munitions, explosives. <clears throat> we uh, don't have occasion to blow up too much around here, son. But if we ever do, we'll... We don't know who to call. The ad says no experience. I'm sorry, son. I, I, I just don't think it's going to work out. Look, uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, if you really need a job, son, uh, I always use somebody to sweep up around here. If you want to, come on back. Uh, just foreclosing. I'd like to help him out, but what could he do here? Well, I was thinking uh, maybe file clerk. Tom Cantrell's nephew is our file clerk. You mean the kid that uh, sits around all day? You're a good lawyer, George. But since when did you get so friendly with the Mexicans? Dad, I trust my life with this man. We'd be lucky to have him. Don't be naive, George. He doesn't have the right qualifications. You understand what I'm saying? Loud and clear. Your heart's in the right place, son. Bring me the Mallinson file when you get a chance, would you? I'm sorry, Johnny. It's okay. I understand, George. Well, it's, you know, there's just no openings. It's a small company. And... It's okay. Thanks for trying. You know, now, you know, if things are tight, I can spot you some dough. That's no oh, problem. Oh, no. No, no, no. Nothing like that. I'm, I'm fine. No, oh, thank you. Well, just keep it in mind. You know, you don't have to worry about me. You ever miss the war, George? The truth? A 
little bit, yeah. Me too. Late for what? No. Don't tease me, darling. The Carlson's dinner party. It's been on the calendar for weeks. I don't feel well. well you'll feel better after a nice dinner. I'm not in the mood for a party. You haven't been in the mood for anything. It's time for you to snap out of it. The war's over. Oh, snap out of it. How easy. Why didn't I think of that? Don't be sarcastic, George. It doesn't suit you. Look, I don't want to sit at another dinner party where the only thing everyone wants to hear are old war stories that I'm trying to forget. You're not sounding much like a candidate, George. Well, I'm not yet, am I? Ronnie Bishop called today from the Ovington Observer. Wanted to know if there was any truth to the rumor you're running for trustee with Tom Cantrell. Must be a slow news day. Of course, I told him you were. You did what? It doesn't hurt to get a little press, George. Let Cantrell know people are interested in you. Barbara, I haven't told anyone I'm running. I haven't told anyone I'm even strolling yet. Now, my advice to you is that you call Ronnie What's-His-Name back and you tell him that you're mistaken. George, you know you're going to run. You're gonna run because it's the right thing to do. You better shave, darling. All's okay. It'll be 235, sir. Thank you. The neighbors. Hello, Mr. Jones. Yes, I do have the most beautiful house on the block. Thank you. Oh, my car. <laughs> uh, it's just something I used to get around in. <laughs> <laughs> a car like this, it's just wasted on rich people. You know why? No, why? Because everything they have is just good, so they don't even notice anymore. Me? I haven't even got a chair as comfortable as these seats. Hmm. I'd always notice. Well, someday we'll have a car like this. You know, a car you can't hear coming from five blocks away. I know. Hmm. I'll be right back. Howdy. Feel it. You that kid they gave that bronze star to, right? That's right. So I'm getting my uh, my gas pump by Genuine Hero. I like that. Five cents. Where's Andy? Oh, he had to leave early. And left you in charge? Uh-huh. It's, it's gonna be 85 cents for gas. You didn't need much. Whoa, son, relax. We're working too hard. <laughs> you know what the problem is with a lot of your people from down Mexico way? They think the world owes them a living. That's why I like to see a hard-working Mexican like you. You talk good, too. You know, all these Mexican kids I don't talk good English. Maybe someday I'll give you lessons. <laughs> okay, son, where is it? What do you mean, where's what? Envelope with my name on it. Where'd your boss leave it? I don't know what you're talking about. And you'll be back in the morning. I really do need that 85 cents for gas. You got it all wrong, son. I don't pay you. You pay me. Now, where's my envelope? I haven't seen any envelope. Maybe, uh, just maybe. 
put it in your own pocket. Look, I told you, I really don't know what you're talking about. Cough it up, boy. Maybe I'll give you a lesson in front of your mama seat in there. Is that what you want? I don't have your money. It's like to turn his back on the whole town. People like George stick with their own kind. Well, this doesn't change anything. Still gonna run, kick their butts. Come on, Jesse. Who's gonna vote for us with George running against us? I don't want to hear that kind of talk, Andy. Now, we got our flowers printed up. We're gonna hit the streets tomorrow. Jesse, I gotta lock this place up. Anybody finds out, I'll let y'all in here. I'm... Count me in, amigos. Well, you gotta give the poor fella credit. He's got the courage of his convictions. Veterans Party. Bipartisan. Man has some imagination, don't you think, George? Now, what do you suppose he's after? I mean, what do you think he really wants out of all this? I think he wants to do the right thing. <laughs> now, I really feel sorry for him. <laughs> Cigar, George. No, thank you. Well, is there anything else we need to go over? No, it's all clear. Ah, uh, cheer up, son. There's nothing to it. We'll make a couple of speeches, show up at one or two fundraising dinners for our beloved governor, and play 18 holes on election day. It's that easy. It's a blessing. People know what's right. They'll also know what's wrong. Afraid I don't follow you there, George. You know what I'm talking about, don't you, Sheriff? No idea. He paid a visit to Juan Medina yesterday. Ended up beating him half to death. A little misunderstanding over a payoff, I'm told. What's this all about, Sheriff? Beats me, I never touched him. George. George, I think this election is getting you all jittery. Now, why don't you just relax for a few days? I've got everything under control. Yeah, you, you treat this county like it's your own little dictatorship, Tom. How long do you think people are going to stand for that? I wouldn't be so quick to judge, son. Remember, we're all in this together. Besides, everybody's a little tainted, one way or another. politician. <laughs> what do you want me to do about Meadows? Do? Why? What is there to do? Let the boy run? Hmm. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give the young man the chance to go head to head with me. Public debate. Well, that's going to make it look like you take him serious. No. no. It's going to make it look like I have nothing to fear. Besides, as I understand it, this boy left half his brain on some battlefield. Well, get him up in front of the people of this town and let them see exactly what kind of man wants to be their mayor. Set it down. You think this is all a big joke, don't you? I never said that. You don't have to. It's all over your face. Every time you look at me. I'm just afraid you're taking on too much too soon. Oh, you're worried I'm gonna make a fool out of myself. Don't start this again, Jesse. Now, if you feel this is what you have to do, then do it. Well, 
maybe it would be a little easier if I thought you were behind me. I am behind you. I don't understand what you want from me. Yes, you do. I'm going to ask you again for the last time. Quit the factory and work with me on this. I need you. I can get half a dozen men to run that factory for me just as good as you. Oh, is that right? Well, then why don't you just get that half a dozen men to help you run this election? Because I need my wife. Well, how do you think it looks when you're never around? People don't think you take it serious. This has nothing to do with the election, Jesse. You just don't like me running that factory by myself. You want me back here in the house waiting on you hand and foot. That's a lie. Is it? Well, then how come you didn't need me when you cooked up your veterans party? You didn't even bother talking to me about it. You, you made me feel like I wasn't even part of things anymore. And that hurt, Jesse. That hurt? Well, how do you think it feels to come home, see your wife doing your job for you? That you don't fit in no more? That was all in your mind. I never tried to make you feel that way. I wanted you to come back to the factory. I didn't tell you to go run for mayor. <laughs> was that right? Well, I'll tell you what. I'll Drop out of the race right now, and I'll take the factory over again, and you can stay home with Sam. How would that be? I'll call Juan right now. Jesse! You don't want that, do you? You don't want me back there. It's not like that. It's just that I've been running it for a long time and I've done good with it, real good. I never even dreamed I could run a business. It feels good to use my brain. Maybe it makes me like myself more, but it doesn't mean I love you less. You can't ask me to go back to the way things were, Jesse. Well, you better figure out what's more important to you. Your job or your husband? How come I'm the one that has to decide? Maybe you better figure out what's more important to you, the election or your wife. I'll be the one to give out jobs, take bids on county work. I'll make a very good salary. You can move out of this place, maybe get a house in town. What do you think, huh? What about your job? I quit. This campaign is my job now. be happy. For once, we get a chance to take things into our own hands. To make the rules ourselves. What are you thinking? About my sister. The one in California. Her husband works on a farm. They are safe there. There are a lot of jobs. There's nothing to be afraid of. She has a lemon tree right outside her window. I'm not going to run away. We have to fight to change things. I'm afraid. Of what? What I will do to you. I say it's time people to stop having to live in fear of our sheriff and his deputies. Uh, it's, it's time for people to stop having to pay bribes just to keep the businesses open. I say it's time for a change. That time is now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, 
I have patiently listened while this young man has made his wild accusations. But I ask you, and I ask my opponent, where is the proof? Well, there is no proof because Sheriff McMillan will bust your head if anybody comes forward. Sheriff McMillan has made the streets of our town safe, safe. And this is the thanks he gets for it. Oh, safe unless you refuse to pay tribute to Tom Cantrell. Safe unless you're a Mexican. Safe unless you don't like the color of your skin All or what right. you look like. All right, Mr. Meadows, I think you've made yourself abundantly clear as to how you feel about what is wrong. Now I'd like to, I'd like to hear how you would make it right. Mr. Meadows, what are your plans for running our city? Well, I got a lot of ideas. I... For instance, how do you propose to raise money for the sewage system that we need? There's a lot of ways to raise that money. I... Well, we're all ears. Well, I haven't firmed up. I haven't firmed up that the best way yet. I haven't firmed that up yet. I see. Well, what about property taxes? I can guarantee you that the people of this town don't want to pay one more penny in property taxes, but they want a brand new grade school. Now, how do you propose to solve that problem? What? No. No, the answers are not in those papers, Mr. Meadows. You don't know the answers. Being the mayor is more than pointing fingers and making accusations. You have got to have the experience. And you have got to have the brains. All I need is a fair chance. That's more than you've given us. But I can run this town. I can run this town. Just as, just as, just as you were saying. Just What's the matter? It's Jesse. I need help, George. He's got a gun. I'll be right there. Oh. Jesse, please come inside. Get away from me! Just leave me alone! Jesse, I want to talk to you for a minute. Jesse! I just want everything to go away. If you hurt yourself, you're gonna hurt Becky and Sam too. Is that what you want? I want you to leave. I don't want nothing from you. None of your business, though. Let's get him ready. Leave me alone. Uh, leave me alone. What about Becky? This is her. Can you talk to her? Talk to Becky. Get out of here. Get out of here, George. You're a traitor. I don't want nothing to do with you, George Me. Give me that gun, Jesse. I'd just soon shoot you, shoot myself, George. Now you get away! Give me that gun. George, please. 
Come on, Jess, you can't let it end this way. Let me do it, George. I just want to do it. I can't stand it anymore, George. I, I can't think straight. I can't talk straight. I don't want to be like this. I want everything to be the way it used to be, George. I, I want it all. I want it all back. We all want it back. Do you think I don't? Do you think I wouldn't trade everything just to have my life back the way it was before? I don't know where I belong anymore, George. I don't know what I'm supposed to do now. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Neither do I. Nobody understands. We're only one source. That's why we gotta stick together. We can't quit. Then why'd you turn your back on us, George? We needed you. That should have been you up there today. Not me. Why didn't you stick with us? Why? George, don't you know that's where you belong? Yeah, I'm sorry, kids. I just got lost. That's where. I'm just lost, that's all. part the politicians never tell you about. Very big on glory and victory and medals. Also, none of us mind when some of the boys don't come home in one piece. Or don't come home at all. Oh, there's an even better medal for that one. Well, it'd be nice if it was that simple. I hope that things are just a little more complicated than that. Believe me, when you see what I see every day, it is that simple. Well, I guess everybody needs something to believe in. And what do you believe in, George? Tom Cantrell? What's that supposed to mean? How can you do it? How can you throw in with Cantrell? You know who he is. He's no better or worse than any other politician. I don't believe you're that naive or that cynical. Cantrell knows that, that people in this town look up to you, and he's using you to give him the one thing he cannot buy, respectability. Hey, I never asked anybody to look up to me. You want to know what I believe in, do you? Maybe I don't believe in anything anymore. Is that a crime? Anymore, George? When did you ever believe in anything? You've always been your father's errand boy. Now you're going to be Cantrell's. Who the hell are you to judge me, Hope? You think you got all the answers, don't you? You know what your problem is? You're too idealistic. You always were. No, it certainly never was your problem. It's because I always saw things for what they were. You always saw things for what they should be. That's exactly right. That's why I married Tim. Tim was right about you, George. You are dead.
George, are you all right? Jack, I want you to call Jesse. You have him get everybody together. Meet me down at the armory tomorrow, 11 o'clock. Have him get Hope Tyler. I want her there, too. What am I supposed to tell him? Just do it! Stands, I'd like to run for mayor of the Veterans Party. Now, we're only going to have one chance. we got to make it count. It's going to mean hitting the streets. It's going to mean knocking on doors. It's going to take every no minute of every day from now until the election. We can't just talk to the vets anymore. We've got to take this message to everybody in this county. Now, if everyone who's complaining about Cantrell votes for us, he won't have a chance. If they don't, well, then they deserve him. Was it the war that made you so self-destructive? Or did it make you just plain stupid? Well, I'm sorry it embarrasses you. You have embarrassed yourself. You could have ridden Cantrell's coattails right to the Capitol. But no, you had to throw in with a bunch of losers and shake everybody up. Those losers won the war for you. I am warning you, George. You are taking on the wrong man. If you lose this election, and you will lose it, your name isn't going to be worth a good spit in this town. You're going to have to start over someplace else. And let me tell you, Tom Cantrell has a very long reach. Tom Cantrell's time is up. He better face it, and you better face it. There's something else you should keep in mind, George. You've got less than 30 days to mount a campaign. You are going to need a miracle, and that doesn't come cheap. You're going to have to look to a lot of people for favors. And if the miracle should happen, don't think those people won't come back to collect. You've got to give to get in this business. And in a year, or maybe two, you'll be doing the same things you hate Cantrell for now. It's the nature of the beast, George. Have I failed you in some way? Is that what this is about? Some kind of childish rebellion? Barbara. I know this may come as a shock to you, but this has nothing to do with you. I see. Well, then maybe you can tell me what it does have to do with. You wouldn't understand. Don't condescend to me, George. I don't deserve that. Barbara, all my life I've let other people call the shots. I can't do it anymore. I won't. By other people, I take it you mean me. I mean my father, I mean Cantrell, and yes, I mean you. So I'm to blame for you throwing away your political career? You listen to me. For once in your life, listen to what I'm saying. It has nothing to do with blame. If you want to blame somebody, blame me. I'm the one that let it happen. I'm the one that never took responsibility, but now I am. Now I have to. What about your responsibility to me, George? I invested my whole life in you. You needed someone to push you. If it wasn't for me, you would have been content to drift into nothingness. You owe me.
Why didn't you ever tell me you felt this way? I tried. But you were too busy planning my future to hear me. All right, George. You've made yourself clear you've chosen your course. I won't stand in your way. But I want you to know. I have no intention of letting you drag me down with you. I won't be married to a loser. There's a price for everything, George. Maybe you should think about that. If we fought for democracy on the battlefields of Europe and in the Pacific, then why can't we have it here in our own town? Because Tom Cantrell won't let us, that's why. So on election day, I want you to say no to the Cantrell machine. We must have the courage to believe in ourselves, to believe that we can make a difference, that our vote does count, and believe this, every vote for the Veterans Party is a vote for yourselves. Gotten a little rusty, Henry. Uh, well, I don't get to play much anymore. Things busy down at the office? Uh, it's been a good year. Well, glad to hear it. You know, uh, I like to think that I've had a hand in helping your firm along, Henry. <laughs> yes, Tom, you've been good to us. Oh, happy to do it. Happy to do it. Of course, uh, I don't think I have to tell you how disappointed I am in George. No, you don't. He has said some very distressing things. Slanderous, really. You know, I was hoping you might have a word with him, see if he would agree to tone down his rhetoric. Don't tell me you're getting nervous, Tom. <laughs> a good politician's always nervous, Henry. Of course, George is going to lose, but, you know, there's no point in putting ideas in people's heads. Make them restless. What makes you so sure he's going to lose? The Mexican. The Mexican. Nobody's going to vote for the Veterans Party as long as there's a Mexican on the ballot. <laughs> Not in this town. Not in any town I know. Am I wrong? No. You're exactly right. Henry, why don't you tell George that he's made his point? After the election's over, I'd be more than willing to sit down and discuss his beloved veterans, see what I can do. Hell, he's gonna come out of this smelling like a rose. But for now, he has got to stop slinging the mud and behave himself like a gentleman. I can't get through to him any more than you can, Tom. He's changed. He's his own man now. Well, you're his father, Henry. I'm dependent on you. What's it say? The election were held today. We'd still be camped held by two to one. How about the phones? Well, lots of support. Lots of good lucks. But very few committing either way. Well, time for more radio. You might as well know I'm supposed to be here to call you off. Cantrell. He wants to make a deal. You stop exposing him for the thief that he is, and he'll take care of the veterans after the election. I'm sure that if you press him, he'll even suspend the licensing requirements for businesses. Maybe even some of the taxes. You mean the bribes? All this is assuming that I lose. It's a pretty safe assumption, George. You know that. 
But I don't understand. Everywhere we go, people cheer us. It'll take more than a few hundred veterans to turn the tide. Will he keep his word? He will. I don't know. What do you think, Dad? The truth? A few weeks ago, I would have told you to make the deal. But everything's changing, George. The town has changed. You've changed. I don't know what surprises me more, that you made a believer out of me or made a believer out of yourself. Either way, it scares me. I'm too old to have everything shifting around me. But even I can see that Cantrell's got to go. He's out of control. He's gone too far. We were friends, you know. Ever since we were children. That's a long time ago. George, you really want to win this election? Of course I do. You know I do. Are you willing to do what it takes? Be ruthless? Well, I don't understand. What are you talking about? You've got to take Juan Medina off the ballot. Nobody's going to vote for a Mexican. The town's not ready for it. It's as simple as that. No, no, I can't do that. I won't do that. He's one of us. Is he worth losing the election for? We're not talking about right or wrong here. We're talking about reality. We're talking about politics. With him, you lose. Without him, you got a chance. It's up to you, George. I can't believe what I'm hearing. All I'm saying is that we take a look at this. I'll take a look at what? What are you saying, George? Now, Johnny with a bronze star, the man's a hero. Nobody's questioning that. We all know Johnny's the best. What we're talking about is something bigger. It's bigger than you think, George. We're talking about the color of a man's skin. Now, I don't like it any better than you do. But the simple fact is that not many people are going to vote for us if Juan is on the ticket. Now, is there anybody in this room that can tell me I'm wrong? George is right, Hope. We have to think about what we're doing here. It's too important to take a chance. Take a chance? I'm sorry. I thought that was the whole point. We're here to make changes. You can't change people's attitudes overnight, Hope. Then how are those attitudes ever going to change, George? If we don't take a chance, who will? We're already trying the impossible here. Now, you tell me what's best for the town, that we lose on principle? Or that we compromise and win? That's not the point. Well, if winning isn't the point, Hope, now what is? The point is, we're supposed to be equals. We're supposed to stand for something, something better than Cantrell. I understand that, but what good's that gonna do us if we lose? Oh, good. Walking out on us isn't gonna make it go away, Hope. I told you what I think. I can't sit here and be a part of this. And if we compromise this today, what are we gonna compromise tomorrow? George, I can only stay a minute. Look, John. The thing is, George, I hate to do this to you at the last minute, but I'm going to have to drop out of the race. Wait a minute. What are you talking about? Well, I'm thinking about it. Maybe I really don't want to stay here. This place, this town. Maybe it's time to move on. I'm sorry, George. I didn't mean to let you down. Now, look, Johnny. I don't know what you've heard, but you're not off the ticket. Now, there's been a lot of talk, but it doesn't mean... It doesn't matter what I heard or didn't hear. I'm not going to be the man who costs us the election. And I'm not going to wait to be kicked out. 
Either way, I lose. It's a relief, isn't it, George? It's not that way, Johnny. Yeah, well. Why don't you tell me someday what way it is, okay, amigo? If we win, we're gonna make things change, Johnny. I promise that. Congratulations, George. You're a real politician now. There's nothing here for us anymore. The future. How can I have children here? In a place where man can't get ahead. You had to live in your own world. This is where you come from. This is where you should stay. How there is only pain for you. I can't. Papa, I can't. I'm not like you. The army showed me what's out there, what a man can be. I have seen what's out there, Juan. Here you have your family, people who understand you. Papa, I think I'm going to take Maria to California. We can live like people there, not like animals. What makes you believe it'll be any different in California? It has to be. No, it doesn't. Stay for a little longer, Juan. Got you back. Okay, Papa. Seen the polls? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're catching up. Some even have a slightly ahead. It's amazing what the sacrifice of a human being can do, isn't it? You want a drink? Tough week for you, George. It's lonely at the top. Well, here's to election day, a mere, a mere eight hours away. I guess I've been pretty tough on you, George. Well, somebody had to be. God knows I wasn't up to it. I, I don't know this whole thing with Juan. I knew you were in a tough spot, and I know there was no easy answer, but... It all just makes me feel corrupted. Welcome to the club. You know, I can still see you in that garden. <laughs> I don't know how many times I've thought about that. It's just a glance stayed with me a long time. Get some sleep, George. You too.
no. See, the thing is, we need to. Mrs. Ferguson needs to ride in. She can't drive, and when we want to get her in, she's loaded. Uh -huh. Could you could do that? Oh, that'd be that'd be great. We really appreciate it. This is all happening because of you. Nobody believed in you. You went ahead, did it anyway. You're a hero, Jesse. Don't forget that. Becky. Um. Um, I, I know I never said this to you, but when I got shot, they told me I might lose my memory. So, so all I did was think about you and Sam and everything we've been through. I tried to remember every little thing in case I never remembered it again. And, made me realize it made me realize how lucky I am and you got me through it whether you know it or not I don't think I don't know that you ran this factory better than I ever could You kept everything going. Now, if anybody's a hero, it's you. So far, it's veterans' party. Yes. Two to one. Yeah! They're saying it's two to one veterans. Flowing down in it. How's it looking? And they're still lining up around the block to vote. Well, I think it's about time the polls were closed, don't you? Deputize everybody you can. Meet me at the post office. I swear I will. Now, we're taking what we came for and we're getting out of here. Oh, my back. Oh. Uh, okay. It's gonna be all right. Okay, let's get him out. Uh, all right. Well, what are you waiting for? Let's go get his legs. We're losing some blood. Move. Come on. Let's go get his legs. Cantrell, he's gone too far this time, McMillan. Hell, George, it's all your fault. Should 
kept your mouth shut, minding your own business. What the hell we do now, George? Necessary, yeah. George, we can't just go in there and start a war. Come on, just slow down a minute. Well, we can't really call the police either, can we? Oh, you can call the governor. If you go in there and start shooting, you're going to play right in the Cantrell's hands. The governor's on Cantrell's side. We're out of time. They're going to count the votes. He's going to declare himself the winner. George, please don't let this happen. People are going to get hurt. Why does it always have to come down to a war? You want to know why, Hope? Because some people can't be reasoned with. Who are you talking about? You or Cantrell? You better put the governor on the phone right now, boy, or you will be looking for a job. Then you tell him it's Tom Cantrell and it's an emergency. All right, how many of them are out there? Well, it's hard to tell. Every 10 minutes, another farmer with a shotgun pulls up. Yeah, yeah, Earl. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you better believe it's important. I got a bunch of renegade veterans with guns surrounding my jail. They're trying to steal the ballot boxes, that's what. No, no, I don't know how many. There's a, there's a hundred of them, maybe, maybe two hundred. Look, I need some help, and I need it fast. Yes, Earl, I have men, but I don't have enough to... Yeah. Yes, all right. You, you just hurry, you understand? Someday we'll see how fast I move when your back's up against the wall. Cover the window. What do you say? It's going to mobilize the National Guard. We just have to sit tight and wait. In the meantime, let's do what we came here to do. Open it up! Tom, this is George Meade. We want two of your deputies to come down, unarmed with the ballot boxes. Set them right down here in the middle of the street. We'll take them, do an official count, then we can all go home. Now, if I don't see that ballot box, Come through that door in one minute. We're gonna open fire. You got 60 seconds. <laughs> 20. You're out of your mind, George. We're the law here, not you. The National Guard's on its way, and they're gonna. <laughs> Who fired that shot? safe here till help comes. You heard what they said. As soon as the National Guard gets here, they're going to shoot first, ask questions later. We'll go to prison, George. 
they don't kill us first. We gotta get those ballot boxes out of there before the guard gets here. If we can do that, then it's just a matter of time before we get a chance to tell our side of the story. Whole town's our witness. So what are we gonna do, George? The brick's too solid, we can't shoot through it. They can stay in there all night. We'll just have to blow it. backs on you, Johnny. Let you walk away. Nobody blame you for staying away. It's different when it's a war, right, George? Yeah, but it shouldn't be. I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing this to get rid of Cantrell. I'm doing it because this is my town, too. Better put your head down, amigo. Out. Get out. like we won. Maybe because we are dated. That's what Cantrell said. What? No. George? Was it worth it? I hope so. Congratulations, Mr. Mayor. 